is Justin. Today on Theocast, John and I have a conversation about baptism. And if you're anything like the two of us, you've thought about baptism as maybe this thing that you do, uh, an act of obedience to Jesus, perhaps, entrance into membership in the church, or maybe where you hail from, it was just something sentimental and family showed up and clapped and it was a, a nice time. But you're not quite sure what baptism means for you now as you aim to trust and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, in today's conversation, we're going to look at some scripture and try to help you understand that baptism is not an act we perform, but in fact, it's a gift that God gives to us. And it is about his faithfulness to us before it is ever about our faithfulness to him. So listen to this episode today. Be encouraged, believer, by your union with Jesus Christ and how baptism signifies that. Stay tuned. If you're new to Theocast, we know that many people who start listening to us struggle with their assurance. Uh, what does it even mean to walk by faith or how do you rest in Christ? So we put together a free ebook called Rest. And it's where you can learn about the sufficiency of Christ and the differences between the law and the gospel. And that's an important distinction. If you'd like to learn more, just go to our website, theocast.org. Welcome to Theocast, where we have been doing our awkward poses for our YouTube graphics and John just knocked his monitor over. And uh, we're going to ride the wave because as we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, we are professional podcasters. Mm. So welcome to Theocast on The Real, where we aim to encourage weary pilgrims to rest in Christ. And we try to have conversations about the Christian life from a confessional, reformed, and pastoral perspective. Here at Theocast, we're trying to take the clutter off of the gospel and reclaim the purpose of the kingdom of Christ. And so if any of that intrigues you, stay tuned for our episode that we have in store for you today that will be hosted by none other than John Moffat, who is the pastor of Grace Reformed Church in Spring Hill, Tennessee. And I'm Justin Perdue, pastor of Covenant Baptist Church in Asheville, North Carolina. John, it's been a topsy-turvy, interesting start to this episode. <laughs> yes, it has. But we're going to yeah. press on, man. We're going to make uh, it. Yeah, soldiers of the cross or something like that, right? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. You, you, As always, you got an announcement or two. People can't. Can't make no, it a week nothing. without your announcements. Yeah, and just, then, you know, and then you're going to tell people about the combo today. That's right. That's right. Nah, just you know, if you're new and you want to, there's a. I mean, I got a Theocast shirt on. That's pretty cool and new. And then mm-hmm. we got Trust Christ to Calm Down mugs and hats. JP normally wears a hat. And, doesn't have his hat on yet, but well, I, you know, I'm trying to. I don't know. Uh, but uh, the, the, the most important announcement. Is well, that, that white coffee cup is a big thing. Yeah, because it's apparently a big one. black. Black coffee cups alter the taste of coffee for everybody out there. It's true. That's it's true. true. Uh, that is, we'll talk that about is that one day, but not today. We'll talk about that. That's true. That's uh, true. That is you the price I'm not out. lying. Hey, anyway, listen, go ahead. if you want to connect with other people who have like-minded questions and faith, but you don't want to be on social media, you're tired Ooh. of social media, or you just kind of want to Amen take a break. somebody. Or you want to be able to go and look at a Christian conversation, Preacher. but not get distracted by the ads. We've got that for you. It's called Theocast Community. All of our past episodes, our education material, our articles, Justin's sermons. I think between the two of us, there's almost 600 sermons on there. You Sounds can uh, close. search. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, five different podcasts. Anyways, hey, listen, it's free. And uh, if you'd like to support us, there's a way to do that as well. Just go to the- theocastcommunity.org. Okay, Justin, the reason why we got on the microphones today has nothing to do with mm-hmm. that. No, no. I am going to predict that today's podcast is going to get pretty exciting because you got two guys who are great sinners and love to talk about a great savior. Amen. And baptism is something that we are just swimming in to the deepest parts of the water we can find. No pun so, nope. We love it. And we're Baptist. So we like oh, to dunk gosh. them. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'd throw it out there. Now that you've alienated half our audience, but anyway. Yeah, well, yeah, you know. Anyways, um, but to begin, we're not with, having we're not having the conversation. No, about we are not having the conversation. You think views we're having. on baptism? We're not talking nope. about mode. Nope. We're not talking about any nope. of that stuff. The we're talking about the baptism. sacrament itself. That's and, right. Yes. The most important part, and listen, those other parts are, are are important too. And one day we are we are working on some episodes on covenant theology and baptism, but not today. Listen. 
The gift of baptism is something that has become extremely precious to Justin and I in our churches and to our personal lives, but it has not always been that way. I was raised where I can't even remember how many times I've been baptized, maybe two, three times. I remember the last time I was baptized, but I grew up in an evangelical Baptist church and to be make it the simplest, Justin, it, they got the gospel right, but baptism was about my decision to follow Jesus. Mm-hmm. I have decided. I mean, you can even see shirts that say that, right? I have decided to follow Jesus, which, you know, there is some truth in some of that, but it's not the reasons and purpose for baptism. And, and, and baptism really becomes this one-time event that is emotional, and it's a big celebration. Oh, yeah. But we don't really contemplate it other than it's part of our Christian resume. It's like, you know what, did I, did I do that thing? Yes, I've done that thing. and um, But it's not anything I really reference. Uh, sometimes I would yeah. refer it to like, you know, we like to celebrate our birthdays, but there's nothing significant about your birthday that changes your life other than it's a fun, it's something you Americans do to celebrate you know, it's a reason to party, really. And and baptism is really kind of that remembrance of like, yeah, I did that once. Mm-hmm. And that's about as far as it goes. And it was an act of obedience. And at times, Justin, when you hear other people get really teary-eyed and excited about their baptism, you often feel ashamed. Like, man, what did I, I got something sure. wrong here. That, sure. That's been my experience. And we want to kind of help address that from a biblical standpoint. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'll let you speak into this as well, because I know you've come from a slightly similar but yet different background as well. Yeah. When I was young, I've shared this before, that the church that I grew up in was liberal theologically. Uh, It was a Baptistic church and pretty moralistic culturally. So baptism, I mean, there were only three articles in the Statement of Faith, uh, and and baptism by immersion was one of those, interestingly enough. Um, (laughs) But (laughs) baptism for me growing up, was, uh, I think me individually in my own soul, just because the way I'm wired, it was a big deal to me. Mm -hmm. But in the church in which I grew up, it was pretty, like you said, it was a sentimental thing. It was uh, like, it's a day you mark your calendar, you let family and friends know people show up, they clap, you know, Mm -hmm. and that was about the extent of it. Uh, It wasn't connected to church membership in any way. It was just kind of like this thing that you did. But then, you know, later on in life, in a much more serious-minded, better, more sound context, uh, baptism was was talked about in these terms, that it's a public profession of faith. Like, this is how you publicly profess your faith in Christ. It is tethered to church membership. So it's your entrance into the church, into the membership of the church. And then, as well, it's, uh, like you said, it's something that we do in obedience to Christ. And on those three points, you know, obedience to Christ, entrance into the church membership and all that, and then a public profession of faith, those things are not untrue from my perspective today, but there is so much more that needs to be said about baptism. And I think where I would maybe launch us off, John, is I think that the emphasis in baptism, at least where I have come from, has been off. And I think this is true about the sacraments in general. And then I'm going to make this comment and then we're off and running. The sacraments, at least for most of my Christian life, I understood them to be primarily about my faithfulness to God, not his faithfulness to me. That's right. And I I think that that's the, yeah, yeah, I think that's the common experience of most evangelicals is the sacraments produce some kind of anxiety in them because they have been taught that these are about their faithfulness to God, not God's faithfulness to them. So what we are trying to do today, as we often do, I feel, on Theocast, is we're trying to invert and kind of reorient the perspective to say, no, the sacraments of, we're not talking about the Lord's Supper today, but the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's table are God's gifts to us because we're weak and because we need them. And they are primarily and always about God's faithfulness to us before they're ever about our faithfulness to him. Well, Justin, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the theology of baptism yeah. so that uh, people can understand what we mean. Sometimes people think that we're making more out of this than we should. Hmm. And man, uh, the whole Bible actually is wrapped up in this sign. It's it's really fun once you understand the backstory to mm-hmm. it. Uh, I'll just start in Genesis. I know, Justin, you preached through this, so we're going to be able to freely interact between this. Mm. Um, the New Testament writers will in, 
in explaining the relationship between us and the Father and us and the gospel, they will use Old Testament uh, pictures at times to help us mm-hmm. understand. Now, that's because they were people of the Old Testament. Like, Justin, if if uh, if we were to be modern-day writers at times, we'd probably pick, like, the most famous, I guess, TV shows or stories or, you know, what literature that was available at the time. But sure. to the Christian the Jew, that this would have been their Old Testament. This is what they mm-hmm. knew. Mm-hmm. And so Peter is talking about baptism and the nature of baptism. And in First Peter, he makes reference to Noah. So before I even read what Peter has to say, I just want to talk about kind of what the story is, right? So God looks upon the world and he says, mm-hmm. there's there's none that does righteous. They're, they're, they're all have evil coming out of the, them. The thoughts and inclinations of man's heart is only evil continually. That's right. Genesis yeah. 6. And right. so his conclusion is to bring judgment. Mm-hmm. And I I think it's really important that, that the judgment, mankind deserves that mankind deserves. That's absolutely right. And he says in verse six or uh, sorry, that's in Romans, but in Genesis, he says in, for verse seven, sorry, uh, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land and mm-hmm. blot out what, what means that he's, he, does he use? He uses water to do so. Yeah. And so what you can conclude from this, and we'll learn this in multiple stories, is that water is a sign of judgment. And it's really been a sign of judgment multiple times in Scripture. But from Genesis, it's being used as a sign of judgment. And then how does Peter then utilize this sign of judgment in contrast to the ark? The ark is what? <laughs> the ark is the means of salvation. So yeah. when we when we look at uh, this is going to be First Peter chapter three, and um, give me a second. Sorry, I lost it here for a second. Here we go. So he says that baptism, which corresponds to this, meaning that the ark is what Noah. So God waited patiently, and, right? While the ark and Noah was being and built. his family are brought safely through water by means of the ark. That's right. So by yeah. safely, by means of the ark. So he says, baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, so in, yeah. so go ahead. I was going to say that's a contrast between like an Old Testament baptism of repentance that's and right. cleansing in that regard versus what is now true in Christ in the new covenant. That's right. So he's using yeah. the idea of, okay, well, this is what, baptism would have looked like or this is an right. illustration of baptism right and those who those who were in the judgment of god did not make it through the judgment waters but those who were in god's appointed mm-hmm. vessel and by god's means by his sovereign means brought it through and he who did, how does he correspond it he corresponds it directly with jesus because exactly. he says it's through the means of christ and his resurrection which means right. christ went through the judgment waters right and how did we get through it safely when we know in he comes him. through safely because he raises from the grave. Right. And how does it we know we get through safely? Because we are in Christ. Exactly. Our ark is Christ. Exactly. While, while we're here, yeah, the contrast I was depicting was it's not just this external cleansing. That's it's right. not even just this kind of, even a Hebrews 9 idea. It's not even that, you know, you're being you're being purified under the law and you're now mm. ceremonially clean. It's that, no, your your conscience and like your sins have been remitted. And like, this is a real thing, like talking about being in Christ, of course, just screams Romans six, like we're brought safely through the waters of judgment in the ark, who is Christ. And so Paul's language, of course, in the early verses of Romans six, where he is spilling ink on our union with the Lord Jesus, he, he says, do you not know, this is Romans six, three, that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Mm. And so one of the first things that I always want to communicate like here in our, my local church with our people when it comes to baptism, what is baptism? It is the sign of our union with Christ That's and that exactly we, are, right. we have been grafted to use the language even of our confession that we have fellowship with Jesus in his death and resurrection Mm. that we have been, we have been grafted into him and we'll get to this maybe more in a moment. And it's a sign of the remission of our sins. And so 
the union with Jesus peace, man, is, is epic. Like, and that at the end of the day too, is a comment we can make about the sacraments holistically. Cause what is the Lord's table about? It's like, it's our ongoing nourishment in the Lord Jesus via our union right. with him as we feed on him by faith. Right. Um, but brother, I, I, maybe before we hammer the remission of sins thing, I, I want to make sure I don't trample on you. Yeah. No, I just wanted Jesus. to going back to the union with Christ part yeah. that you're making here. I think Peter when he says baptisms, which corresponds to this, oh yeah, I think it's important because he says now saves you. It's not the baptism, right? It's it's, it's of vessel. course Christ. Right. It's the vessel of the baptism, right? right? It's Christ exactly. And it's it's so it's wonderful because right. like, even if you fast forward to Moses, what does Moses put into the the word ark is only used twice in the Old Testament as far as that mm-hmm. Hebrew word. It's called right. it's used uh, translated as basket in mm-hmm. in Exodus chapter two. But mm-hmm. Moses is saved from judgment of Pharaoh yeah, yeah. in the Nile through in an, in the ark through, through in the ark. And then yeah. what does Paul say about uh, about in First Corinthians? What does Paul say about Moses that the Israel was baptized into Moses? And sometimes mm-hmm. we don't understand that. But what it means is Moses was the representative; he was the mediator between exactly. God and men. And so, because of the representation of Moses. These people were saved from the judgment waters right. of which, the Red Sea. Go ahead. Which screams of how we are united to Christ in baptism. And we'll talk That's about right. Jesus' baptism, I trust, here in just a second. We are. Where he's baptized by John. That's right. But the the Paul is making the reference there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Paul is making the reference there. I'm trying to find the actual passage here in a second. Where the representation is Christ for us. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Romans six three. Do you not know that mm-hmm. all of us? No, that's not it. Where's the one about? Um, I have it in my notes here, and I just can't seem to find it here in a second. Uh, oh, here it is, right here. First Corinthians ten. For I do not mm-hmm. want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were also under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all mm-hmm. were baptized into Moses in the cloud mm-hmm. and in the sea. So mm-hmm. the 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 idea of representation. It's so important that it expands the idea that baptism is not the sign of you being cleansed. It's the sign of, first of all, Christ is the ark by which brings you through the judgment water. And he's the mediator between God who is Mm -hmm. bringing wrath and you. And so because you are under the mediation of Christ, because you are in Christ, you were baptized in his name. That Mm -hmm. means you are receiving the benefits. This is going back to union with Christ. So these, these pictures between Noah and Moses and we can talk about Joshua and Jonah here in a minute, but these are all Old Testament stories that, one, move the ark of God's, or the story ark, the, the, the moving the story of God's redemptive nature, but then tying it to your sign of baptism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I want to hammer a little bit of the, the remission of sins part, too. Yeah. That baptism is a sign of the remission of our sins. And speaking as a couple of Baptists on the pod, I want to say, how many Baptists have you ever heard talk like that? <laughs> yeah. People right. are terrified to speak in these terms. That's and right. like our confession, the Second London Baptist Confession in 29.1 says that, mm-hmm. that baptism is a sign of this. It is significant of these things. And so like, if I'm going to talk to a person in our local church who is placing faith in Christ and is, and is desiring to be baptized, desiring to join the church, the two things that I lead with are this sacrament that you will receive. By the way, you are passive in it. You will not baptize yourself. You will be baptized, right? No matter like you, what your tradition is. <laughs> it, will, it will be done to you, which That's is right. also something that should teach you about salvation. That's right. You don't save yourself. You receive it from the Lord. It's what Christ has done that you receive by faith. You will also passively receive baptism. And so as that's happening... The two things in the forefront of your mind should be your union with the Lord Jesus Christ for justification, sanctification, and eternal life, and then the fact that your sins have been forgiven, and that that is what this sign means for you. And so when you are thinking about, and we're just going to go ahead and use this phrase, when you're five years, 10 years, 20 years from now, if the Lord tarries, and you're struggling mightily with sin, or you're doubting your legitimacy as a Christian, one of the things that we're going to look at you and say is, brother or sister, remember your baptism. Mm -hmm. Because it's a tangible, punctiliar reminder that you have been united to the Lord Jesus Christ and that you've been sealed to the day of salvation. 
and you will not be lost because Christ is your mediator and you are in him, right? And so that is all kinds of comforting and assuring and it puts wind in the sails and propels us forward even in the Christian life and we should talk about baptism that way. Hey guys, real quick, some of you are listening to this and it's encouraging to you, but you have questions. So where do you go? How do you interact with other people who have the same questions and share resources? We have started something called the Theocast Community. We're excited because not only is it a place for you to connect with other like-minded believers, all of our resources are there, past podcasts, education materials, articles, all of it's there, and you can share it and ask questions. You can go check it out. The link is in the description below. So Justin, when you say that, remember your baptism, That that's for people, they're kind of like, yeah, I guess remember the day I made a decision to follow Jesus. I, I guess remember the day I was saved. I'm not mm-hmm. sure how that's beneficial to me because I think I really want to focus on, on you know, who Christ is and what he's doing. And, and yep. that's the disconnect we're making. And that's what we're trying to help you understand is that there are these images that, I mean, the one we were trying to help you understand is, first of all, you are being rescued and united to Christ. That's the first Amen. symbolism. But the second thing you have to remember is that you are, I've been renewed in Christ. You're a new creature. I mean, just even listen to how first Peter describes who you are in this new baptism. He says, baptism, which now, this is first Peter 3, 21, baptism, which now corresponds to this now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which means that thing that, that, causes shame and doubt and fear and you can you just walk around with a dark cloud around you. Yeah. He's saying, no, it removes that not just creating a clean conscience where there's nothing there. He says right. a good conscience. Uh-huh. It's not just empty. It's not removed of sin. It's it's replaced with righteousness. Mm-hmm. It's replaced with that which is good. So your conscience that used to scream at you says, yeah, you were guilty and shamed, but baptism brings to you not only the removal of sin, but also you are now in union with Christ. You are being given something that is mm-hmm. above. I mean, this goes back to, Justin, when we were talking about John's baptism, I'll go and introduce it now. We can talk about it, but um, you, you, another Old Testament baptism would be when first John, I'm sorry, John chapter one, he's, uh, baptizing Israel for the repentance of their sins, you know, in returning Matthew back three. to the Messiah yeah. and, and Matthew three. And what does he say? And you know, John one, behold the lamb of God who takes mm-hmm. away the sins of the world before he gets into the baptism of waters. Mm-hmm. Now, just to help you understand from a narrative standpoint, John's been baptizing people metaf- metaphorically. He's, right. uh, their, their, their sins are being washed away in the water and Into they're the getting out of the river. Right? But then, the, then what does the pure lamb of God who has no sins, he comes mm-hmm. into the water where the sins of Israel is. And he is baptized into that water, which means he's contaminated by us. But what do we learn that when Christ is on the cross, what does his blood do? It washes us, right? It washes our sins away. And what does that do? It removes, but there's, there's almost a a double picture there where right. we're receiving the righteousness oh, right. of Christ and he is receiving our sins. What's well, that That's double, double imputation. imputation? The great, the That's great right. exchange. Exactly. He takes our sin. We get his righteousness. And one more comment on the baptism of Jesus. I trust this has struck the listener before. Jesus did not need baptism for his own no. sake. Mm-mm. He was righteous. He was Which perfect. is what John says. Like, no, he I, was clean. You right. I mean, me. this is why John, exactly. In Matthew 3 in particular, John is warped out of his frame. It's like, yeah, and like in, in, in John chapter 1, 2, yeah, you should baptize me. This should be going the other way. And what does Jesus say in Matthew 3? He says, no, it's right that we do this so that all righteousness might be fulfilled. That's so right. Jesus is doing it for redemptive purposes, not for his own sake directly, but for the sake of all whom he represents. That's right. And it's that that can't be missed, right? No. And and then of course, right after that in Matthew's gospel is the temptation narrative where it's very plain that Jesus is the representative of us all, just like Adam was, right? That's right. And He's, he's the representative of everyone who's united to him. So yeah, yeah beautiful imagery of Christ taking our sin and fulfilling all righteousness in our place so that we receive his righteousness by faith. And yeah, so when you say the phrase This is just straight remember, gospel stuff. Go that's ahead. right. Remember your baptism, you're you're being reminded that because of what Christ has done, mm-hmm. I now have been given a good conscience, a clean conscience exactly. that is 
but good because it's representative of what Christ is, right? Mm-hmm. He, I, I was washed in his righteousness. He was receiving my sin. That's mm-hmm. all the symbolism of baptism that's important because there are times, Justin, when we do fall short of God's glory, we do disobey him, which is a, all, a daily, time. A daily yeah. practice for us, not because we want to. Uh, we can then run back into the Father's presence asking for forgiveness. Why? Because we remember our baptism allows us to be there. And this will kind of lead me to the next one, um, unless you wanted to, to go back on this, but which is... Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, let me briefly comment, and then yeah. I I will lead you to where I think you want to take us. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna just read a, a few words from the liturgy that we use in our church mm. when we baptize somebody. That's good. And uh, and then this will lead you to your comment. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we will say, um, so and so like you know, John. I'm just gonna use that name. John comes today to be baptized as a sign of his union with the Lord Jesus Christ as a sign of his union with him and his life, death, and resurrection, as a sign of the remission of his sins, as a sign of his being raised to walk in newness of life in Christ, as a sign of his being sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, and as a sign of God's pledge to keep him unto salvation. Mm. Then we ask, John, do you trust Christ alone as your Savior and as your righteousness before God? I do. Enter the water. John, God grants repentance and faith. And based upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mm. John, go. Yeah, yeah. So that last part, Justin, I think is often lost. When you remember your baptism, I think one of the most powerful things that you can remember is that Christ's name was proclaimed upon you in the judgment waters Mm-hmm. And when we think about uh, anytime Jesus uses the word in, he's talking in the approval of, like he says, you can come to the Father mm-hmm. and ask whatever you want in my name, mm-hmm. under my the name. approval of my name. Yeah. Like yeah. you can have that. Because you're, you're coming in me. You're coming under my blood and righteousness effectively. That's right. And so what does Jesus say in Matthew 28? All authority has mm-hmm. been granted to me, which means I have mm-hmm. the right to do what I'm about to do. And he says, look, go into the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I think it's vitally important that we just don't kind of think that's the formula or that's the magic saying. He's like, no, these disciples are receiving a sign, and that sign is a name change. Yeah. It's forever having the name stamped upon them that be- that they belong to God. I want to read this to you. Um, this is from Sinclair Ferguson. I found it to be just, I don't, I don't know how to improve it because it's just so good. Um, so it's in reference to numbers six, 24 and following where mm-hmm. it says the Lord bless you. And, you know, yeah. you, I think most people know this. Aaron's benediction. Face, yeah, exactly. And so Ferguson says this, this is what baptism is. It's the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, whose father, the Lord, who is son, the Lord, who is Holy spirit, putting his name on us. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't, that does, doesn't do anything within us, but in fact, it does something to us. Amen. When my parents said to the city register question, who is this child? They said, we're putting this name on him, Sinclair Buchanan Ferguson. Mm-hmm. That did absolutely nothing within me, but it did something to me. I meant that this is what the name to which I would respond to for the rest of my life. Yes, I could repudiate it just as Israel Uh, could repudiate the ironic blessing, just as people do repudiate their baptism. But nevertheless, that name marks us for the rest of our lives because it summons us to believe in the Trinity, to trust in the Savior, and live in the fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. It's powerful because baptism is a naming ceremony. It's where God puts his name, and God would not put his name on anything he would not approve. Right. Right. He's like, don't take the name of God in vain, which means if he's saying, dear child, I'm putting my name on you. That means mm-hmm. you belong to me and I approve. It's a, there are times, Justin, we need to remember that because we yeah. don't feel that way, do we? No. I mean, and to be reminded that God is pleased with us. It's right. Right. It's like he approves and he's pleased. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that can't be said enough to the believer. And for you to look back to your baptism and apprehend that truth 
is a very powerful thing to use your language. And I think this is why Reformed Christians through history have seen baptism as a means of grace. Mm. Like we, and, and the reason why we observe it as a church, the way that we do in, in my context, and I know the way that you do in yours, is because right. we understand that the Lord is present with us to minister, not only to the person being baptized, but to minister to us all even as we all observe and participate in this thing along with mm. the person receiving the sacrament, because this is the stuff that's being communicated to us yet again, the cleansing waters of baptism, union mm. with the Lord Jesus Christ, raised to walk in newness of life in him, in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Like you, right. this name change, this adoption thing, like this is a, this is a signing in one sense of the adoption papers, right? Yeah. Where, and, and those those are signed with the blood of Christ. You've been united to him, and nothing's going to change that. That's right. You know, and yeah, it's It, it, it's it really sad. does mark us off. You know, we don't yeah. think about it marking it off, but it does. It's like right. there's a spiritual and psychological marking off of us. That Like, hey, God has pulled us aside and he's putting his name on us. And there's it's like it's it's like almost like a wedding ceremony where there's this precious moment. I, I look back to my wedding day and I, I think about what how my life changed from that day on. It really mm -hmm. did change, right? Mm -hmm. Like I went from living alone to being one with another human being. And now every decision I make, Jace, Justin, I mm -hmm. make in light of my union with my wife. Even mm -hmm. when I am tempted, right, to be dishonoring to her, I stop and go, but I can't, right? She has made this commitment to me. She's been faithful to me. I made this commitment to her. And because I love her, mm -hmm. I'm not going to allow myself to go this way. And that's how Paul addresses it in Romans 6, does he not? He goes, hey, don't, yeah. don't go back. To well, living like you aren't in union with Christ because you no, it, are because of your baptism. Amen. I mean, the whole argument in that chapter, as we've said before, is the objection that's raised to the gospel. Like if you, Should we if, go you on if, if you talk like this and if you say that the law was given to make sin worse, if possible, to increase the trespass of Adam, and but yet where sin abounded, grace abounded all the more through the free gift of righteousness in the Lord Jesus Christ so that we might reign with him forever in eternal life. If you keep talking like that, then I guess we should just sin so that grace might abound all the more, right? Like we should just mm. sin. And his answer is by no means. And he's like, how can you who died to sin now live in it? Because don't you understand that you've died with Christ? You've been united to him. and. Yeah, let's just say this again. Like Paul does not respond to the objection of lawless living on account of the gospel with law. He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't say uh, if you're a legitimate, serious Christian, then this is how you'll live, so that you prove yourself to not be a faker. That's not how he talks. He says, "No, you've been united to Christ. You've died with Him, meaning you you died to sin's guilt, right? right? And you are now freed from sin's dominion." You've become obedient from the heart. And so, oh, and oh, by the way, when you were sinning, what good did it do for you? Nothing. Mm -hmm. And so remember that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God in the Lord Jesus Christ is eternal life. And so live like who you are now, right? That's, That's right. the emphasis. Yeah. And so, man, what you've a joyful rescued, way to think about it. You've yes. been renewed. You've been renamed. It's beautiful. Yeah. All yeah. of that. The, sometimes yeah. people don't think about uh, Tim Chester really has a great chapter on his book, yeah. uh, Truths You Can Touch. So we'd yeah, recommend that with this it, box. Totally. And in there, he talks about how we don't think about the future ongoing active realities of our baptism. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what we're talking about now in For that sure. because I've been baptized and I've been marked off and I have this special union with God in Christ through by the means of the spirit, it, changes. So remembering your baptism literally means remember the covenant of grace that's been made with you. Like you're yeah. in it by God's means. By the way, sometimes, um, Justin, we can, people could be confused. So I want to create a clarity here uh, just in this moment so people understand. We're not saying the act of being put into the uh, baptismal waters is the moment of salvation. We've always said it, that this is a sign, but we're trying to expand the 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 sign. <laughs> like some people just think, right. oh, it's just a sign of me being cleansed. No, no, no. It's far more than that. So be clear. 
The Holy Spirit comes and does these works, and then God gives us the sign as a grace mm-hmm. to us saying, as surely as you went into the waters yep. of judgment and you came through it, is in Christ. the way you did that is right. you went in with Christ and came through his resurrection, and these yep. are all the benefits. You have right. newness in life. You have a new name. Remember these as you seek to obey going forward. So there are signs representing what happened to us spiritually, but the actual physical sign does not save us. Just just in case someone right. might be confused on what we're right. saying. Yeah. A couple of other comments just along these lines, talking about the covenant of grace and the new covenant, right? And the promises that God makes around that covenant. Think Jeremiah 31 language, like this new thing that God is doing. What's the yeah. real crescendo note of that promise and that covenant? It's that I will forgive their sins. Yeah. Right? The Which they got so sins. upset about with and Jesus. Who sure. Are you? And so in our union with Christ, his death is counted as our death, right? So in him, we died to the law. It yeah. is as though we have, we too have endured the curse of the law. So justice has been administered. His righteousness is our righteousness. So it's as though we've been as perfectly obedient as Christ was obedient for us. And his resurrection is our life. I mean, he said, I, he says this, I am the resurrection and the life. I mean, so there is absolutely an element in which baptism is telling us that in being raised with Jesus, he is now our eternal life. When it comes to the remission of our sins, the new covenant, like I just articulated, established in Christ, accomplished through Christ and founded on the blood of Christ is for the forgiveness of sins. And baptism is the sign of that covenant. And so you're getting, you're receiving that, that Christ has made satisfaction for our sins and all of our sins have been washed away. And so when you enter the baptismal waters and the Lord, you receive this sacrament, this gift from God, that is what it signifies. And this is why we say cling to it. Remember it. That's right. You're, it's like we assure people, like you every week in your church, we every week in our church, we have a corporate confession of sin, mm-hmm. Right. Or occasionally like a, a lead prayer of confession where someone will confess on our behalf. But there's always an assurance of forgiveness, right? There's the pronouncement of pardon that saints on account of Christ, your sins are forgiven. And Amen. we need that word all the time. And baptism preaches that word mightily. That's right. Yeah. And to, to add to all of this, I think we only opened the box and talked about the introduction to you. Sure. There's so much more to this. It, and that, that was kind of our hope and our, and our desire is to introduce mm-hmm. the subject to you because the signs, you know, when, when you think about it, I'll just talk about this for a moment and then, you know, I'll hand it to you, Justin, and we can close it down. But sure. um, God always uh, gave a sign with his promises. When we go back to a Moses, or Noah and after the judgment waters came, which was, can you say pretty traumatic because the whole world died and yeah, you know Moses Noah's now there you know with his family and God says Noah I want you to know I'm not going to do this again mm-hmm. uh, not until Christ comes we know this and then there'll be a set but I'm not going to flood the world again so if you see rain I'm not going to do it again and here's how you're going to know uh, he put a sign in the sky yeah. right and he put that sign in the sky called a rainbow obviously and um What's interesting about that sign is that that sign isn't for God. No. But God sees it in the way in which— And remembers. And remembers. And that's important for us to, when we see the sign, we can remind ourselves that God sees the sign too. And what we remind ourselves is that God is faithful to keep his Mm -hmm. promises. The reason why we should go back to Noah and baptism is that God has been faithful to keep his promises, even with with the flood and then the promises of Israel. And he gave physical signs there. He's always given signs to symbolize his faithfulness. And so for Mm -hmm. us, he said, child, I'm giving you not a sign of a rainbow, but I'm going to give you the sign of baptism. And right. you can look at that sign, reminding yourselves of your baptism. And God in his kindness knows for the rest of eternity, we're going to be baptizing believers because more and more people are coming to him. And every time we see that sign, we remind ourselves of God's faithfulness. Mm-hmm. Not not mm-hmm. I decided to follow That's Jesus. right. God decided to put his love upon me. And mm-hmm. I am a new, I've been, I have a new conscience. I have, I'm a new creation and I have a new name and I need to remember this because it's the only way I survive in a dark world that lies to me about who I am every day. Amen. It's the only reason I would ever open my mouth 
to tell other people they too can be baptized if they come and hear the gospel and they can receive the gift of the promise of Christ in his baptism mm-hmm. if you let me share with you the gospel. It's it's a wonderful truth. And this sign, it, it's not just something to put on a t-shirt. It's something to put mm-hmm. on your heart every single day. And whenever God looks at his signs that he gives us and he remembers, that's not just him recalling to mind something that like escaped his mind mm-hmm. as though he's remembering something he forgot. Like, oh yeah. Uh, whenever God remembers, that is him acting on the promises that he's made. That's and right. I think baptism, it, it corresponds here too in that, like all the language we've used, union with Jesus, remission of sins, being raised to walk in newness of life, but then being sealed to the day of salvation with the promised Holy Spirit, right? It is God's pledge to, to keep and to save and to sanctify and to, to raise you know, from the dead now spiritually, but one day bodily, right? And so we're, we're looking to this sign that God has given us as a, as a reminder to us that God remembers and that God acts right. and that God keeps his promises, right? One last observation that I think may encourage the, the listener out there from even the Genesis account, like you were talking about with Noah, at the end of, of Genesis 8, you know, when they're off the ark finally, and yeah. Noah makes a sacrifice to the Lord. But then in verse 21, the Lord smells the pleasing aroma, and the Lord says in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Illustration is this. God's promise that he makes to Noah and the whole world through him and the sign that he gives is not based upon a change in man. That's it's right. based upon the faithfulness and the grace and the mercy of God. And Amen. so even there, as you're baptized into Christ and you are a new creation in him and you're raised to walk in newness of life, don't ever get it twisted to think that your assurance and your peace before God is grounded in the way that you've changed. It's not. It's grounded right. in the mercy and the grace of God and the promises that the Lord himself has made to you. So trust Christ, fix your gaze on him, remember your baptism. We hope that the episode today has been encouraging, has been to me, and uh, I, tr- I trust to you as well, John. We're grateful for all of you out there who who would choose to listen to to two guys talk about the Lord Jesus Christ and Christ for us and baptism and all of these things. Uh, we are, along with you, weary pilgrims, eager to make it to the homeland that we've been promised. And we understand that we will make it there solely because Christ has us. Because of because the ark, is by which we, yeah. we find ourselves because, in. Because we That's are right. in Christ, we are, right. we are secure. And so rest in that good news today, beloved. And we'll talk with you guys again next week. We look forward to it. Hey, everyone, before you go, Justin and I first wanted to say thank you. And if this has been encouraging to you in any way, please feel free to share it. But we also need your support. And it's when you give that it really helps us financially reach more people. So the next time you consider giving to a ministry, we hope that you would pray about Theocast and partner with us as we share the gospel around the world.